but it was based, I would say, 99% on my talk on Miami Mysteries that I gave every year, usually about Halloween time. And you got a very big crowd listening to it. So how would you describe your interest level in Miami Ghost Stories? Is it something that... Very low. Very low. <laughs> uh, as a historian, uh, I'm... Uh, uh, I, I'm a, I have a great interest in the history of Miami University and, 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 this, and the community of Oxford and in this region, local history generally. And most recently I've edited the, uh, the Bicentennial History of Miami. Uh, you can't really measure expertise in a field where there's not really anything to measure it by. I mean, there's no way to gauge an expert in the paranormal. You just have to essentially go under people's word, and it's usually false. Uh, I mean, I've been interested in it all my life, so I've done a lot of reading. If that qualifies you as an expert, maybe. But it's just like anybody else, it's just your own opinion, really. And I've taught the Miami History course that Dr. Schreiber taught for many years. Uh, I've been teaching that course since the late 1990s, I believe. And um, you don't, uh, I've also taught courses on the history of Western College. Uh, you don't take up these topics without people asking you constantly about ghost stories. <laughs> My wife and I love Oxford. We think it's a very special place, a little piece of heaven right here on earth. We retired in 1981 after 16 years as president. And there was only one president who served longer, and that was Alfred Upham, who had served 16 and a half years. Now, that, uh, 16 is enough for me. I don't see the point in trying to find the truth in something if you're just going to believe bullshit that makes it look like a joke to everyone else. So, and so I uh, encountered many people wanting to talk about ghost stories all the time. Um, so it's not entirely fair to say my interest level is low. I think it's entertaining and amusing. Mm -hmm. uh, I think it's. Uh, I think it really it, it constitutes the history of lore in the community. And what always um, strikes me as um, of interest is who is talking about ghosts <laughs> and who is not. <laughs>
two, two three. three. That's turn, turn it off. off. No, wait. I don't see anything. Dude, I see something. I am going to freak out. I don't see a single. Hey, yeah! Shut <laughs> up! <laughs> Steve, <laughs> nigga. Shut up. See, bugged. <laughs> they would see it. The headlights of a motorcycle coming towards them, south going to north, towards the Eric Road. And the light would appear and then disappear. <laughs> Shut up! Oh, <laughs> <laughs> Ow, I need Steve, I swear to God. We took us a bunch of times. Holy oh, shit! Oh, God! That might be it. What the hell is that? That's a red Oh, my God. I know, but that's. Oh, God, that's so. We, how, that's what we saw before we saw it. What is but, that? There's a fucking light. Oh my god, I see that. I'm scared. Oh. If it starts going up and down hills, that's it. I'm, I'm, I'm going about to try. Now, I have never seen it. But I had well more than 30 students who reported to me their experience and either seeing the headlights of a motorcycle and then disappear, or a few things even saw the headless motorcyclists. There are many variations on this story. Some say this was a nightly ritual to avoid the girl's disapproving parents. Some say the motorcyclist was a soldier returning from war only to find his sweetheart with another man. The truth is, there is no record of any such accident ever occurring on the Oxford Milford Road. And yet students go in droves to see the light of Oxford, much to the chagrin of residents. Oh my god! Oh my god! I think that's it, dude. Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh my god! Dude, oh my don't, god. don't go! Don't go! Dude! Oh my god! Oh my god. Oh my god. Shut up! Shut up! In a 1992 interview with the Hamilton Journal News, Oxford Milford resident William Falk claimed that his house had been broken into repeatedly by amateur ghost hunters. He also reported yelling at students who got out of their cars. Resident Joey Mackey told the paper that students were out there every weekend, saying they wouldn't come out here if they didn't see something. It's, uh, it's simply just the way that the road's laid out. It's straight, narrow, and just constantly declining down to the bottom. So when you're sitting at the bottom or the top, you can see very far in both directions. There's a crossroads about midway through. And traffic tends to go that way because there's, as far as I know, there's not really anything down that road. Like past where you turn around to park to see the ghost, quote unquote. Um, so most people turn off from the crossroads or turn onto the crossroads. Now when a car is that far away when you're sitting at the bottom, the two headlights appear as one because it's just simply so far away and all you can see is the light, which creates the motorcycle light and then when cars turn off of that crossroad and go up the road you see their brake lights flickering uh, they're obviously dimmer lights so it wouldn't be as um, distinct and stark as a headlight so it's more more subtle and uh, flickering as in the bike uh, reflectors that people claim as a ghost and that's it it's just a road. It's a legend. Bottom road out here, dead ends in the Oxford Milford Road. I've been on Oxford Milford Road many, many times, and I've never had that experience. All I can say here is what some students have told me about their experience. Have you ever tried flashing your uh, high No, <laughs> <laughs> I have not, Chris. <laughs> 